Hey folks, Eric Rodari here, Director of Historic Preservation at Historic Deerfield. Uh, I wanted to make a, a few videos that began to look at uh, early New England buildings and the materials that uh, went into them. So I thought a good place to start might be to look at uh, building hardware and uh, more specifically uh, nails and uh, the different types of nails that were used in um, uh, early buildings. There are basically three different types of nails that were used uh, from the 17th century up into the 20th century. The earliest are going to be uh, wrought nails. Um, and then in uh, the late 18th century, we're going to begin to see cut nails being used. Um, and then in uh, the later part of the um, 19th century, we're going to start to see uh, wire nails. So in this video, I'm going to talk about um, wrought nails, sort of um, what to look for as far as their characteristics, how they were used, different types, um, you know, the variety of them. So, uh, so wrought nails, these are the earliest nails that were used and, um, you know, they date from all the way to, uh, the, you know, the, the 17th century, uh, yeah, the earliest buildings that were constructed in the 17th century, uh, right up into, um, these were used in, into the 19th century for, for different purposes. Um, so the, the wrought nails, wrought nails are, are handmade nails uh, made out of wrought iron. And uh, the, the raw material was, was nail rod. And uh, what that was was basically a, a length of, of wrought iron rod. Um, and the dimensions of that vary depending on the size of the nail. Something small like this might use now we're at about three sixteenths uh, of an inch square and um, uh, that would have been basically uh, hammered out to a uh, drawn out to a, a, a point to, in order to, to form the tip of the nail uh, basically you know uh, the length of the nail would be determined right there it would be the nail rod would be nicked um, that length would be broken off the longer piece of nail rod and then this would be taken over to uh, an anvil and, and then headed and it could be headed in a number of ways the the traditional way um, what you'll you'll most commonly find are uh, these rose head nails and that's where it was struck four maybe five times and it created this um, what's called a ro rose head to it um, uh, there's variations of this nail, um, and that has to do both in the way it's uh, headed and also the, the tip you'll find on this. So as I said, the rose-headed nails are, are kind of the most common. You'll see those used in, uh, you know, sort of uh, framing, um, maybe even board and batten doors, things like that. But where um, a nail was to be hidden, so you didn't see the head, kind of like a finish nail, let's say, uh, you might see this uh, this T-headed nail, and uh, again, it's it's you know it's the, the the wrought nail drawn out to a point and whatnot. But instead of uh, receiving that rose head, those four or five blows, um, the head would be um, maybe struck twice and then fl flattened out. And this was uh, a nail that was intended to be driven below the surface of wood, so. A lot of the times you'll see this used uh, where, let's say, moldings are applied to uh, uh, maybe around a, a fireplace surround or a door or window or catrave. Um, and this was also used quite commonly in uh, the application of flooring, where uh, the floorboards were laid down and they were face nailed, and this could be driven b below the surface uh, of the wood. Um, uh, an, another variation of these nails, so I said that the ends of these were, were drawn out to a fine point, but um, a version of, the, of this nail has a, um, a flattened sort of a chisel tip to it. And uh, that was a, a variety that was used uh, um, in instances to, uh, where, you know, to, to minimize splitting of the wood. That, that flat bill to the, um, to the tip of the nail could be driven in um, at, uh, you know, across the grain. It would uh, shear the grain of the wood and like I said, mi minimize any splitting. 
So uh, sometimes you'll see this, um, you know, this uh, chisel tip. It's a it's a flattened tip uh, at the end of it. Um, a, a characteristic of the cut, or, oh, sorry, the the wrought nail that was um, uh, that was sort of uh, advantageous to it was that because it was uh, wrought iron, um, it was malleable and it could be worked cold. So. Um, it was an excellent nail for clenching. So this is where the nail would be driven through, let's say in a board and batten door, uh, driven through both the board and the batten straight through, and then it could be hammered and bent over flat, and that's, you know, uh, clenching. So it was a nail that could be clenched. Um, one thing I should say is because these nails were used, uh, wrought nails were used uh, for such a long period of time, like I said, through, you know, from the beginning of the 17th century here, um, right up through the 18th century and into the 19th century. Uh, it, it isn't ideal for getting a precise date to when, um, you know, some, something was built or uh, an improvement was made, but, but what it does is it helps kind of narrow down to a, to a period. So it's, uh, it's useful in, in that respect. So, uh, so that's our, our hand wrought nail. Um, and um, in the next videos, I'll, I'll talk about um, the different types of cut nails uh, and then uh, wire nails and when those date to and the characteristics of them. So, um, so tune back in and check out those videos. Thanks for watching.